Ms. Montgomery, I just remind you that you remain under oath. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I'm gonna have a lot of questions, but I do wanna go back to some of the stuff that you said at the end and make sure I understand. I think you said that you were never alone with Harmony once you were evicted. Right. And I think uh, you said pretty much the whole family unit stayed in the car? Yes. And that was from the time that you were evicted? Yes. And I think you also said something about uh, from the time that you were evicted, every time you were in public, uh, Harmony had to be under a cover? Yes. Okay. And you talked about an accident that was on November 29? Yes. And that's the day after Thanksgiving? Yes. A couple of days after you got evicted? Yes. And after that, on the same day of that accident, you actually went with the family to your mother's house? Yes. And so you, Harmony, Declan, and Seamus are there with your mother and her boyfriend and Adam? Yes. You were not in the car at that time? No, we were inside the apartment. And Harmony was not under a blanket? No. And um, on December, what is it? Second, uh, you and Adam got in another bit of a fender bender, right? Yes. And that was out near Market Street, right? Yes. And the kids were not in the car that time, right? I don't remember. You don't remember that they were not in the car? I don't remember if they were in the car or not. Okay. So do you remember talking to uh, the police about that traffic accident? Yes. And telling them that you thought, where'd it go, that uh, Harmony was being babysat by Tabitha Scott. Yes. Because Harmony and Declan and Seamus were not in the car that accident, right? From when I was being told, asking to remember that. I beg your pardon? I was being asked that question before. Uh-huh. And I said maybe they were being babysat by Tabitha because I didn't remember if they were in the car or not. Okay. You couldn't remember who might be babysitting them, either your mother or Tabitha, right? Right. Um, so I don't remember not having them in the car. Okay. If I showed you a copy of the police report on that accident, would that help refresh your recollection of whether or not the kids were in the car? Yes. of a report it's four pages and you can read anything you want to refresh your recollection but I would start perhaps there that talks about the gist of the accident Okay. Does that refresh your recollection about whether the kids were in the car? 
No. It doesn't? No. Okay, I'm going to ask you about that conversation with the police. That you recall the accident? Yes. And you recalled that it was near Market Street? Yes. And you recalled that accident when you were talking to the police, correct? Yes. And uh, I have a copy of that. We'll go back a little bit. Um, you had a conversation with the police June 3rd. You recall that? Of what year? I'm sorry, 2022. Yes. And during that conversation, the police asked you about that accident, right? Yes. And when they asked you about the accident, uh, they suggested that with it being at Market Street in the morning, you had probably just gone to the clinic, right? Yes. And uh, they asked you where the kids were, right? Yes. And you said, I think Tabby was watching them. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think, I don't remember if it was her or my mom, but I don't know because I wasn't really at my mom's house yet because we went on the 11th. Yes. Okay. So when they asked where the kids were, you thought that they were being babysat by Tabitha, perhaps your mother. Yes. So I'm going to start with actually probably this investigation. And you were contacted by police um, sorry, a little mixed up, but you were contacted by police in December of 2021, right? Yes. But there had actually been information in the media about uh, looking for Harmony Montgomery, right? Yes. And you had actually seen things in the newspaper about Crystal Sori um, wanting to find her daughter. Yes. And then when the police came to you, um, they wanted to talk to Adam about his daughter, right? Yes. And at that time, you and Adam were separated, right? Yes. You were living in the shelter? Yes. This was your second time at the fit shelter, right? Yes. And uh, Adam was in Maine, right? Yeah. And uh, when they talked to you, you told them that as far as you knew, Adam had taken Harmony to his mother's, right? Her mother's, yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. And uh, you said that you thought Adam was in Maine? Yes. Um, but you didn't give them a way to get in touch with him? Right. But you got in touch with him? Yes. And you said for him to come back to Manchester? Yes. You said that he needed to deal with this too? Yes. And you said that you were not dealing with it by yourself? Yes. And you said this is not my fault? Yes. And Adam came when you contacted him. Yes. And he came to Manchester. Yes. But he came to Manchester with a woman. Yes. Um, Kelsey Small. Yes. And uh, you two had been separated since March of 2021? Yes. Actually, St. Patrick's Day, wasn't it? Yes, is when I left. Um, you left and you called the police. Yes. And uh, Adam got arrested, right? Yes. And uh, he was in jail for a while, right? 30 days, yes. And um, you said he was going crazy, right? Yes. That he started going crazy and accusing you of all sorts of stuff. Yes. And he actually struck you. Yes. And you called the police. Yes. And um, you stayed with your mom for a little bit after that? Yes. And then you were back at the shelter? Yes. 
But you did have a place and the shelter was fine with you being there. I didn't have a place. You had a place at the shelter. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Um, and you contacted Adam. Yes. You contacted him quite a bit while he was gone, right? Yes. Because he was in jail for a bit, and then he went to Farnham Center, right? Yes, I gave him a ride. So our transportation drove him to the Farnham Center. And then he went to a sober house? Yes. And while at the sober house, you two communicated? Yes. Uh, but you thought he might be fooling around on you then? Yes. And you get mad at him? Yes. And uh, you'd tell him he couldn't see the kids? I don't remember that. So sometimes you wouldn't let him see the kids and sometimes you would. I don't remember saying that he couldn't see the kids. Okay. Uh, it, sometimes you'd get mad at him. Yes. And uh, you'd communicate your anger to him. Yes. And then sometimes you got jealous. Yes. And you'd communicate your jealousy to him. But that I didn't know that he was with a girlfriend at those times. Right. You just were jealous. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Whether it was Kelsey or not, you didn't know what was going on, but... Well, because he was accusing me, too. Right. Oh. Right. So it was sort of a back-and-forth relationship between the two of you, right. right? And you'd get mad at him, or he might get mad at you, right? Yes. Um, but when things were... Uh, but you were actually... Both of you sort of trying to get together, too, right? Yeah, we were trying to have our family back together. Yeah. Um, you considered him your best friend when things were good. Yes. He was the same way with me, too. Right. But you two were pretty connected when things were good, right? Yes. And sometimes even when things were not so good. Right. Pretty solid with each other. Yeah. And so... Um, when Adam showed up with this woman in uh, December of 2021, when you called him and told him to come back, um, you didn't like her? No. I think you called her Thing? Yeah. Uh, but you needed to work with Adam to get through this inf uh, investigation, right? That's not why I was being nice to him, was not because of this situation. Okay. Okay. Uh, the police talked to you before you told Adam to come back, but they talked to you after you told Adam to come back too, right? Yeah. And you would tell the police that he was... He took harmony to his mother's. Yes. And um, one time they asked you to come in to the police station and talk to him. Yes. And you did go into the police station and talk to him, right? Yes. You went in voluntarily, right? Yes. You said that you didn't need a lawyer. No, I never said that. You said you'd talk to him without a lawyer, right? I said I wanted a lawyer, but that didn't happen. Oh. But I felt like I was doing the right thing. Because you wanted to do the right thing? Yes. 
So you went to the police station to do the right thing for the investigation. Right. And you went to the police station to do the right thing for Harmony. Right. And you went to the police station and told them that as far as you knew, Adam drove uh, Harmony to Crystal's. Yes. So you went to the police station to do the right thing, which was to lie? No, that's not, the f that's not what I said when I went to the police station without a lawyer. Okay. Do you recall that after you talked to them for a very long time, they gave you a chance to uh, pull your thoughts together and be alone and maybe write down what you wanted uh, to say? Yes. And that you did take that time to write down what uh, you wanted to say to them, right? Yes. And uh, they came in and you handed them the note, right? Yes. And they read the note, right? Yes. And they read it out loud for the record. Yes. Right? And they had you sign the note, right? Yes. And in that note you said, I don't know what happened. No clue. I just know he left to bring her to meet her mom to give harmony to her after he dropped me off at work in the morning. Yes. And you wrote, I'm done talking. And you wrote a little bit more and then you said, I can't help anymore. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Look at me, however, and I do. You, I actually can't read it. To show you a copy of exhibit A2 for ID and actually ask you what it says. Can you give me that word? You can look at me, however. Ah, and I'm asking you if you said this stuff, if you need to refresh your recollection, you can, okay? Okay. So you said, I'm sorry, I can't help. You can look at me, however. Think of me, however. You just need to get him to talk because I can't get him to say anything to me. He won't tell me anything. So he obviously did something and isn't saying anything to me. And if he isn't telling me, how am I supposed to help you? I'm done talking. I'm, and then it goes on a little more for other stuff that I won't say. Okay. Okay. Is that what you wrote for him? Yes. And you were done talking, right? And I remember it saying, "I want a lawyer." <laughs> you did, right? In yes. that letter. Yes. And. Uh, you said that you were done talking and you were getting your lawyer and you wanted to go, go home now, please, right? Yes. So, um, Your Honor, I'd like to offer this as defend, um, as a full like, exhibit. Any objection?
So essentially, you were pointing the finger at Adam having done something wrong, not you, right? Right. And you were lying to the police about what happened, right? Right. Um, and you were giving them a lie that pretty much gave you, um, made you look completely innocent. Yes. Okay. And then uh, they came to you another time? Yes. While you were at the Fitz shelter? Yes. And uh, they wanted to ask you about Adam, right? Yes. Because they actually saw you and Adam talking outside of the fit shelter and Adam had just walked away and they came up, right? I don't remember how that went, but I guess. Okay. Pretty much right after Adam walked away, they walked up, right? I don't remember that. Okay. Um, when they told you that they wanted to talk about Adam, you just sort of smiled at him and walked away, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when he, the officer asked you to come to the police department, you said you'd already told him everything, right? Yes. And that was a lie as well, right? Yes. And then uh, during that interview, you also told them that you didn't understand why Crystal was saying she didn't have harmony. Yeah. Okay. And in that, and, and what you told the police back then was that you didn't have a clue what had happened, right? Right. And uh, again, you are distancing yourself so that you have no fault in this, right? They can't blame you. Um, that's not what I was doing. I was doing what I was told to do the okay. whole time. Okay. Well, um, Adam got arrested on January 5th, right? Yes. You got arrested on January 6th. Yes. You knew that Adam was arrested, right? Yes. And you were arrested for something uh, that eventually became a theft charge, right? Yes. And after you were arrested, you were incarcerated. Yes. You were incarcerated for several months. Yes. And you wanted to get out. Yes. You worked very, very hard to get out, right? Yes. You worked very hard to get into rehabilitation shelters and the like in hopes that you could get out to the shelter yes. on bail. Yes. And uh, it took a long time, right? Yes. I think it was May 6th you finally got out? Yeah, it was four months. Pardon? Four months. Okay. Uh, so May 6th is about right? Yes. I want to talk about some of the things going on while you were in jail, waiting to get out. Um, Adam, by the way, you knew was not out on bail, right? Right. And you knew he could not get out on bail, right? Right. You had the ability to get out on bail, but he did not. I, I didn't know he didn't have a chance to get out on bail. Okay. I didn't know what was going on with him. Okay. What do you mean you didn't know what was going on? I didn't know what his situation was with either getting out or not getting out or trying to get out. I had no idea. Okay. Um, you were sort of following events while you were incarcerated, right? Not really. Okay. You were following what was going on with Adam while you were incarcerated, right? I don't know. Okay. Do you remember talking to people about the fact that Adam was still talking to Kelsey on the phone while he was incarcerated? Yes. Okay. So, you, and, and you were saying, you know, I have ways of finding things out, right? No. Okay. We'll get back to that in a second. Um, 
Uh, during that period of incarceration that you wanted to get out, um, you did not tell the police the truth of what happened to Harmony, right? Right. You didn't tell uh, the police how Harmony died. Right. You didn't tell them when she died. Right. You didn't tell them anything uh, truthful at all, right? Right. And then uh, while you were in jail, you sort of thought about your own trouble and maybe how to get out of trouble, right? Not just my own trouble, but okay. What do you mean? I don't know how to explain it. You, know, you thought about missing the kids, you mean? Their trouble too, because they didn't have their mother? Yeah, and Adam. I was still thinking about Adam too. Okay. You were thinking about Adam, weren't you? Yeah. And while you were thinking about how to get out of trouble, um, you sort of wrote some of your thoughts down on paper about how to get out of trouble, right? Not how to get out of trouble, just what I was thinking, yes. About what you wanted uh, while you talked about betraying Adam, right? Right. To get what you wanted, right? No. Okay. I'm going to show you a copy of what is marked for ID as G10. Let's see if you recognize these writings. You finished? Yeah. Do you recognize those writings? Yes. And uh, those are writings of your thoughts that you put to paper about what you wanted to betray Adam, right? No. They are my thoughts. Yes. Okay. Well, let's go. One of the things... Um, that you wanted was uh, one last time with Adam, right? Right. You wanted one last time to maybe kiss him or make love. Yep. And um, what you didn't write was that you wanted protection from Adam, right? Right. What you didn't write was that you were afraid of Adam, right? Right. Because you didn't want protection from Adam, right? I wasn't thinking about that. Okay. You just wanted to be with him one last time before you, as you put it, betrayed him, right? Yes. And having one last time with Adam before you talked to the police, you felt like he would understand and he would love you back, right? No, I'm thinking about the conversation that him and I had before. About? about 
the kid still having their mother okay. when this situation occurs. Right. And that he would take everything. Yeah. So that I could be with the kids. Right. You two talked about that and what would happen. And uh, you both agreed that you were the mother. You were more important to the kids, right? Right. But you were the mother of his children, right? Right. And you needed to be there for his children, right? Right. And you needed to be around more than he needed to be around. No. You actually wanted him to not be caught, right? Yeah, I didn't. Pardon? I didn't. And um, you wanted him to not be blamed for the death. Right. Because he didn't do what you said he did. He did do what he did. Okay. Well, one of the things that you wanted, uh, other than being alone one last time, was immunity. Immunity for everything, the charges you were facing and what you were about to say, right? Right. And it's what you were about to say about Adam, right? Right. You weren't going to say anything about you if you didn't have to, right? I was going to say everything. Okay. And um, you wanted the kids in your life. You didn't want to lose custody of your kids, right? Right. And you um, wanted treatment, right? Right. You wanted mental health counseling, right? Right. And um, immunity from everything. Where did you learn about immunity for Adam? Adam told you about immunity? Yeah. And uh, this is things that you're going to talk to your lawyer about? Yes. Okay. And uh, you thought that you want to see what the AG has to offer, but you want to, don't want to end up get, being screwed yourself by them, right? Right. You didn't want them to play games with you, and then you would get fucked in the end, right? Yeah, because that's what Adam said that they would do. Okay. It was all Adam, right? I am my own person, but yes. Okay. And uh, you said, I am so fucked, I should just, I don't know, for harmony, for me, for my kids, for... So you actually thought, maybe I will help with the investigation for harmony. Yeah. And... Uh, One of the things is you were noticing that Seamus was having a hard time, as well as Declan, and you didn't want them to get adopted out, right? Right. And it's one of the things that you talked to Adam about when you two agreed not to talk about Harmony's death was that people would take the children. Right. And you didn't want people to take the children, right? Right. And. You would rather hide Harmony's death than have the state come and take the children from you, right? That's not what I was thinking. Okay. But you two talked about it and how important it was for you to be there with the kids and for them not to take the children, right? Yes. And it is a conversation that you and Adam had after you discovered Harmony's death. Yes. And it is something that you agreed to after you discovered Harmony's death, right? Yes. And Adam did agree to take the fall after you discovered Harmony's death and had that conversation. Yes. And as you said, when you two were in sync, it was about as tight as it could be, right? Right. Best friends do anything for the other. Right.
that note was your thoughts for wanted, what you wanted your attorney to talk to the AG about, right? Yes. And that note was found in your cell, hidden like between the mattress and the frame? No, it was in a book. Okay. But it was found during a regular cell search, right? Yes. And the COs asked you about that note. Yes. And you said that uh, you wanted to talk to the AG. Yes. Right? And uh, when you hope to talk to the AG, those were the conditions that you wanted to get. Yes. And you did not have a conversation with the AG uh, in January, right? No. Didn't have a conversation with the AG in February, right? No. Didn't have a conversation with the AG in March, right? No. But you did get a subpoena for the grand jury. Yes. And you understood what the grand jury was. Yes. And you did get out May 6th, right? Yes. That yes. was before the grand jury, right? Yes. And you still didn't talk to the AG before you went to the grand jury. Right. By the way, I would like to have that um, introduced as a full exhibit. That would be... G for ID.
The objection is withdrawn. Uh, exhibit G, the ID is stricken. It is entered as a full exhibit. Sorry, okay. I couldn't. Uh, um, so, in any event, you um, after that note was uh, seized, you asked to talk to the AG. Um, you didn't talk to the AG before getting subpoenaed to the grand jury, but you did get out, right? Yes. Um, and before you got out, you actually filed for divorce, right? Yes. You filed for divorce in March. Yes. And um, you were done, right? As hard as it was, yes. Okay, done. He was in your past now. Not right. really, but. Okay. But your future was about you now, right? Yeah, I tried. Okay. And um, you went to the grand jury in May of 2000. And 22. 22, May 20th, actually, right? Does that sound right? I didn't know it was in the same month that I got out, but I thought it was around that time, between May and June. Okay. If I showed you a copy of the front of the transcript of your testimony, would that help refresh your recollection about when it was? Yes. Okay. And this is? States, uh, defendants exhibit B for ID. Does that refresh your recollection? Yes, please feel free to check through the transcript to make sure it's correct and that it's you. I remember the, um, I remember going to this, yes. Okay, and looking at it doesn't refresh your recollection about the exact day, but it seems like around the... Yes. Okay. Now, when you went to the grand jury, you had no immunity. Right? Right. You had no agreement with the state. Right. And um, about two years, over two years had passed since Harmony had died. Yes. And uh, over two months had passed since you wrote that note that is Exhibit G of the conditions that you'd like to get for quote, betraying Adam, right? Yes. And uh, so you went to the grand jury. Yes. And you were advised that uh, you had to tell the truth, yes. right? They actually swore you in like you were sworn in here. Yes. And um, there was a prosecutor there asking you questions. Yes. And there was a group of people not in this configuration, but probably even more people there that were the grand jury. Yes. And uh, you were not particularly happy with Adam when you went to the grand jury, right? I was stuck in my head. Okay. Well, uh, you lied to the grand jury, right? Yes. Even though you swore to tell an oath, swore an oath to tell the truth. Yes. And 
not only did you swear an oath to tell the truth, but you were actually given, uh, I think what they called uh, ground rules. Do you remember being given some of the rules of testifying in front of the grand jury? Yes. And you were told that you could refuse to answer any question if it would incriminate you, right? Yes. And you understood what incriminating you would mean, right? Yes. And it, that meant if it would get you in trouble. Yes. And you were told that uh, incrimination was pretty much if your answer would uh, risk you being charged with a crime. Yes. And you were also told that uh, if you did answer, uh, you had to answer truthfully. Yes. But you were also told that if you had an answer that got someone else in trouble, you had to answer that. Yes. And uh, you were asked if you had any questions about those rules, right? Yes. And you were also told that if you had a question about any of the questions. Yes. Meaning if a question might incriminate you or not, you could take a break, step outside and talk to your lawyer, right? Yes. Your lawyer wasn't allowed in the courtroom, but he was available to you, right? Yes. And if you thought that a question might get you in trouble, you could go out and talk to your lawyer. Yes. And uh, you were also told that uh, you could get charged with perjury if you lied to the grand jury. Yes. You were told that not only could you get charged with perjury if you lied to the grand jury, but you could get charged with perjury for each and every lie. Yes. And that a perjury charge could bring a sentence of three and a half to seven years. Yes. In prison. Yes. Um, and that if you lied more than once, you could get more than one sentence of three and a half to seven. Yes. You could get a sentence of three and a half to seven for every lie you told to the grand jury. Yes. And you lied to the grand jury. Yes. And you lied more than once? Yes. You lied more than twice? I only got two counts of it, so I don't remember lying more than twice. You do not recall lying more than twice to the grand jury. Right. You think you only lied twice to them? Yes. Okay. Let's go through what you talked to the grand jury about. Uh, they actually talked to you. The prosecutor... Uh, had this note. Yes. The grand jury, right? Yes. And I, I couldn't tell. Was it this note that was handwritten by you, or was it a copy of it? It was a copy of it. Okay. And um, he had, he read some and had you read some of the note out loud to the grand jury, so he could ask you questions about it, right? Yes. And uh, he asked you what you meant by thinking about uh, betraying Adam, right? Yes. And you said you were thinking about, you know, that he hurt Adam, uh, Harmony, right? Yes. Because he had actually only been arrested on June 5th for second degree assault to Harmony. Yes. And you said that betrayal sort of referred to that. You were going to betray him on that. Yes. Okay. Because you said that you didn't know what happened to Harmony, that you had no idea. Yes. That was a lie. Yes. And uh, you said you thought Adam hurt her, but you didn't know what happened to her. Yes. That was a lie. Yes. And that was a lie that protected you, but pointed the finger at Adam, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, you were asked about physical abuse by Adam? Yes. And you said he spanked her a couple of times when she wasn't listening or something, but it wasn't a lot. Yes. Was that a lie? No. And... Uh, 
when you, they asked, well, what is it that you're talking about betraying him? You said, uh, well, he verbally abused her by putting her in a corner and spanking her. Yes. Was that a lie? No. Okay. Um, you told the grand jury that the last time you saw Harmony was two days after Thanksgiving, 2019. Yes. Was that a lie? Yes. Um, you told them that uh, Adam dropped you off at work because uh, he was bringing her to her mother's. Yes. Was that a lie? Yes. And uh, you said all the kids were in the car, uh, you were going to work, and everybody was fine. Yes. Was that a lie? Yes. Uh, you said that you worked in the morning. Uh, you knew it was, uh, they asked you about your shift, and you said it was 6 to 2 at Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yes. And that was the truth for when you worked at Dunkin' Donuts, but it was a lie for two days after Thanksgiving, right? You didn't work at Dunkin' Donuts two days after Thanksgiving. Right. And that was one of the lies that you got charged with. Yes. Okay. But you had lied before get, uh, that, right? To the grand jury already. Yes. And then uh, you also uh, said uh, the day that you were working on the grand, at the Dunkin' Donuts, and that was your second charge. Yes. So you got charged for lying about the shift that you worked at Dunkin' Donuts and you got charged for lying about... It was the location. The location, not yes. the day. Yes. Okay. The location of Dunkin' Donuts, right? Yes. But not all those other lies that we've already talked about. You no. didn't get charges for them, right? No. And uh, when you told the grand jury that... Um, You were working at Dunkin' Donuts that day. The prosecutor actually gave you a hint. He said, are you sure? And you said, yeah, right? Yeah. Yes. And he said, take a minute and think because we had the records, right? Right. And you repeated the lie anyway. Yes. And, um, but you knew that they knew at that point that you might be lying. Yes. You knew that you might be getting caught. Yes. And you didn't know what to do? No, I did not. So you just continued in your lie? Yes. And so you said uh, that you had a conversation with Adam, and he told you a day or two before taking Harmony to her mother that he was going to do that, right? Yes. And that was a lie? Yes. And uh, you said that... Uh, You figured uh, he gave her to her mom because her mom, Crystal, had a place. Yes. But you didn't figure he gave her to her mom. No. You knew that she had died. Yes. And she had died in the car. Yes. She died in the car with you. Yes. And you knew it. Yes. And so when you said she, you're trying to convince the grand jury that you're telling the truth, right? Right. Because every time you lie to them, you are subject to three and a half to seven. Right. And uh, so you want them to believe you. Right. And then you tell them that uh, one of the reasons that you didn't think about uh, what was going on with Harmony was because you had a lot of stuff going on with your son. I don't remember that. Okay. Uh, you said that one of the reasons that Adam brought Harmony to her mom was because she had already been through so much with the state that he didn't want her to live in the car anymore and she could live in a better place with Crystal. Yes. And that, again, was trying to get the grand jury to believe your story. Yes. And that was a lie. Yes. And uh, you said, 
Harmony was a normal kid, right? Yes. And that was not a lie? No. Um, you said that she had issues like anybody else? Yes. And that was not a lie? No. And uh, you said that uh, you actually, when Adam came back without Harmony, you actually asked, did you take Harmony to Crystal, like you said, and he told you he had. Yes. And that was a lie. Yes. You told the grand jury you didn't think it was strange that Adam didn't uh, buy Harmony birthday cards or talk to Crystal about Harmony, right? Right. And they asked you why, and you said it was because you had your own issues with your eldest son, and with all that you and Adam were going through, you weren't thinking about Harmony or your eldest son. Right. And that is a son that is not of you and Adam, right? Right. That is a son that um, you were also visiting. Yes. And there was a lot going on with your son. Adam had a lot going on with Harmony. And so you just didn't think about all those things because it was too chaotic. Yes. And so while some of that might be true, that certainly wa wasn't why you weren't thinking about Harmony, um, or about Adam not staying in touch with Harmony, right? Right. Because you knew Adam was dead, right? I, uh, Harmony was dead, I'm sorry. Yes. And so you just sort of made that up as a reason why things are going on in your head, so something that would be strange to other people wasn't strange to you, right? Right. It just sort of popped in your head. This is a good reason to give the grand jury to try and convince them I'm telling the truth. Right. And, but it was from a real life detail, right? That was going on in your life with your eldest son. Yes. And, uh, you told the grand jury that Adam had been violent to you, so you believed that he had been violent to his daughter. Yes. But you hadn't seen anything. Right. And you told them that you were under the assumption that whole time that Harmony was with her mother. Yes. Another lie. Yes. You told the grand jury, obviously, you were thinking he did something wrong, but you didn't want to think about that, right? Right. And you said because uh, you had the other kids too, right? Right. You had other stuff to think about. Right. When they prosecutor asked you, do you think it's a good possibility that Harmony's not around anymore? You said that could be a possibility, right? Right. You didn't tell them that you knew she was dead, right? right? You didn't tell them that you were there when she died. Right. And uh, that's kind of a lie by omission, right? Yes. It's like not telling them something to send them down the wrong road. Right? Right. And uh, when they asked you if you remembered any more about the day that Adam drove off with Harmony, you told them what you remembered. Seamus was two and Declan was 11. Months. Months. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And uh, you were asked if you remembered anything Adam said. And you said, no, not that I can... You sort of let it trail off, right? Right. You were asked if you were done with Adam at the time that you were testifying, right? Right. They said, are you done with him? And you said yes. Right. And are you saying that was a lie? Yes. Okay. And uh, you told them that... Uh, You kept insisting that all you knew was that Adam drove off with Harmony, and that was all you knew. Yes. And that was a lie. Yes. And that is protecting you. 
and Adam. It's actually pointing the finger at Adam, right? No. Okay. Not when it's the lie. Okay. Um, Because you told them that you thought Adam must have done something wrong with Harmony, right? Right. And you were pointing the finger at Adam, right? Right. And you were protecting you. Right. Okay. And uh, when the subject of uh, the items that Harmony had, um, you told them that Harmony had a sports cup with pink flowers, right? I don't remember telling them that. They showed me a picture of it. Oh, okay. Do you remember telling them that? I just remember the picture. Did you tell them that uh, she was wearing Nike sneakers? Yes. And that she was wearing a Star Wars hoodie? Yes. And uh, you talked to the jury uh, with a straight face about remembering what she was wearing, right? Yes. Even though the Star Wars hoodie is what you cut off of her body in the shower at Union Avenue. Right. Okay. Um, and you didn't have any problem talking about that to the grand jury that that's what she was wearing, right? Right. But you did have a problem telling the grand jury the truth that you were cutting off her clothes in the shower at Union Avenue. Right. And you said the last time you saw Harmony, she was happy. Yes. And you had no problem with that lie to the grand jury, right? Right. And, um, The last time you saw Harmony, you thought she was asleep, but she was dead. Yes. Okay. One of the things that happened at the grand jury was you were talking about some of the things that the family did after eviction, right? Yes. And you talked about going to Colonial Village, right? Yes. And Colonial Village is what you've talked about on direct, pretty much where you kind of camped out during the weeks before you went to your mom's. Yes. And I think you told the grand jury that you went to your mom's around the 11th. Yes. And that seems about right? Yeah, it was the beginning of December. The 11th? Like the, in the begin, like the beginning of the month of December. Okay, well, I call that the beginning. Sorry. You'd been in the car for a couple of weeks before going to your mom's, right? Right. So, um, uh, you told them that uh, your car had died, and you slept in the um, car of your friend. Anthony Badero for a weekend. Yes. And it was sometime after that that you went to your mom's. Yes. And um, you told them that Badero saw Harmony every day while living at the Colonial um, for that couple of weeks, right? Yes. And that was a slip up, right? I don't remember. Well, if you were telling the grand jury that Harmony died on uh, November 30th, but you're talking about being in the car for a couple of weeks from the 20- 20... Can you ask that the record be clarified? All right, hold on, no speaking objections, please approach. Uh, 
uh, you told the grand jury that the last time you saw Harmony was November 30th. Yes. Which was three days after your eviction. Yes. But they stayed at Colonial Village, you have said, for about two weeks. Yes. After <laughs> eviction, right? Yes. And you told the grand jury that uh, Bordello saw Harmony every day behind the Colonial. Yes. For those two weeks, right? Yes. That was a slip up, right? No, because you did see her. Okay. For two weeks? He did see her a couple of times, yes. You said every day behind the Colonial? Not every day. Okay. For those two weeks, he saw her, right? Yes. For a couple of weeks, right? A couple of days. During those weeks, he did see her for a couple of days. Do you recall which days? No, I just know we were still in the car. Did, uh, Anthony Bordello didn't see y'all very much before you were parked at the Colonial, right? Yes, he did. Okay. Did he see Harmony often? Once in a while, if we drove to his place. Okay. Uh, would you go in to his place with Harmony? No. Okay. We'd be in the car. Okay. And so I'm going to show you a portion of your grand jury testimony. you some questions about it okay 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 and I will say that this starts after you're talking about the accidents um, that we've talked about earlier today okay now I'm going to show you a specific page which is 45 and feel free to read anything that you want but start at 45 going through until the subject changes okay okay
Okay. So, um, and I'm starting at uh, page 45. The prosecutor talked about, so you stayed near Colonial Village for a period of time, right? Yes. And he's talking about after eviction when you are staying in the car with the family behind uh, Colonial Village, right? Yes. And uh, you say yes. He asked if any... refresh your recollection yes and at first you told them that uh, Badero saw Harmony Sustained. did you tell them that Badero saw Harmony for uh, probably every day for like a couple of weeks yes was that the truth no it was like every couple of days for the whole two weeks? Yes. He would go out there uh, t to the car, right? And talk to y'all, right? Yes. And sometimes he and Adam would go off and do stuff. No. Adam and he, uh, he might uh, actually give Badero, uh, drive Badero in Badero's car for a while, right? No. And that's what, why was Badero coming out to the car for you? Because we were getting drugs. Okay. So you're saying Badero came out to the car to give you drugs? Yes. Okay. Um, you said that Badero saw Harmony probably every day, but now you're saying it's probably every couple of days? Yes. And after uh, you said that to the prosecutor, um, do you remember actually addressing the fact that you um, said that you hadn't seen Harmony after November 30th? No. Does that refresh your recollection about whether he raised that? I'm sorry. That he actually reminded you that you had said that Harmony went missing on the 30th, right? Right. And so he said, are you saying Badero saw Harmony before November 30th? And you said, yeah. Right? Yes, he did. Okay. But you were actually saying also that Badero saw Harmony during that two-week period that you were behind his place. Right. Okay. But you said that Harmony had disappeared, been gone, left. Overruled. So that was sort of a slip saying that, right? Objection. No. You're talking about events after the 30th where Badero is seeing Harmony at a time that you're telling the grand jury that Harmony has gone off, Adam took her to her mother. <coughs> after the 30th. He saw her before that. Okay. Okay. For two weeks after eviction, while you're staying at Colonial Village, he saw her during those two weeks. Is that right? Yes. So eviction would be November 27th, right? Yes. And for that two-week period, that would take you just shy of December eight, nine? Yes. And so you are saying that Mr. Badero is seeing Harmony in December? Yes. That was a slip, right? No. I didn't know what the last time 
was that he saw her, but I know that he did see her every couple of days during that time. Okay, but if Harmony was a... If you're saying that Harmony is gone since November 30th, how can somebody be seeing her in your car after November 30th? Uh, approach. told the grand jury that uh, you got evicted on the 28th, 27th. Yes. And you told the grand jury that for two weeks from that eviction, you stayed at Colonial Village. Yes. But you told the grand jury that three days after that eviction, Adam took Harmony to his mother's. Yes. To her, to her mother's. Yes. So that she was no longer in the car. Yes. But you also told the grand jury that Anthony Badera saw Harmony th throughout that two week period, right? Right. Are you saying that Harmony was in your car during that two-week period for Badero? Are you telling the grand jury that he was in your car for that two-week period after Adam had taken Harmony to her mother's? Yes, because that didn't happen. Overruled. Pardon? Yes, because she didn't actually go missing on November 30th. So yes, he did see her. Okay, so that was actually the truth, right. right? And it was a truth that was a very inconsistent with the lie that you had been telling, right? right? So you sort of slipped up there, but it got missed, yes. right? Uh, after that, maybe it is a good spot. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good time for our mid-afternoon